Hi, welcome to episode 379 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and my handspun yarns and knitting patterns are also available on Etsy in my shop, The Corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, May 23rd. I hope your week is off to a good start. It is a somewhat gloomy day here just outside of Kansas City in Kansas, and that's where I'm coming to you from. Um, it has been a nice weekend. I got lots of crafting done, and actually the weather was gorgeous over the weekend. The temperatures are not terrible. It has just gotten a little overcast, and we expect some rain this week. Yesterday was glorious. It was about 65 or 70 degrees, and I took a three and a half mile walk outside, jogged a little bit, um, but I'm working up my distances because we are potentially going on a running vacation this summer. Um, this is a vacation we booked before the pandemic, um, and we were supposed to go in 2021, but of course we know how things go. Um, and now it is set for August of this year. We are going to be going to Norway. And it is a trip that we have done before. Um, well, not to Norway, but we have done this kind of trip before. And um, so we tour the country and every day we get up and do a 5 to 10k in the morning. As you can imagine, that is more my husband's cup of tea than it is mine. Um, if you've been watching for any length of time, you know that my husband loves running half marathons. Um, he's not so keen on the marathons, but he did actually complete an Ironman last year, his first and probably only. Um, but so this is very exciting for him and I compromise because a couple years ago we went to Ireland, which was great for wool. Um, and the other two trips that we had signed up for are um, Norway, which obviously has Lots of lovely wool and New Zealand. So um, apparently I pick the sheep loving countries and I'm willing to go run a little bit if that's what it means. So that is what I have been up to. I have some crafting to show you, not as much as I would hope. Um, but of course I feel like that's always the case. So let's jump into today's episode. The tea I'm drinking today is called Black Tea. Black Cat it is come from the Friday Afternoon Tea Company, um, which is FridayTea.com, and Black Cat is oolong, lemon peel, pomegranate seeds, and vanilla. And so that is the label. You can see it's like a little uh, dragon up in the corner. A lot of our teas are uh, Dungeons and Dragons themed. So if that is your thing, um, you know, definitely check her out. And I am drinking it in my um, favorite Kansas mug, which is the Toto mug. And it also says on the back, Dear Dorothy, hate Oz, took the shoes, find your own way home. So that's kind of my favorite Kansas joke. Uh, living in Kansas, you get lots of Wizard of Oz jokes. So um, cheers. Ooh, that's delicious. That's going to be a great afternoon pick-me-up. So it is um, late in the afternoon. It is about 4.30 p.m. my time, and I wanted to come and chat with you for just a little bit about what I've been up to this week. The first thing that I finished is actually what I am wearing. This is, and I will, um, it's probably the cover image on this video, so you'll be able to see that, and I'll also add some more images on um, Instagram. This was one of those things that I sort of, on a, uh, on a whim decided to do and had a bunch of problems and then went back and kind of did it my own way and actually I am super pleased with the way it turns out. It fits perfectly um, and it's just exactly what I wanted it to be. So to start with, the yarn that I have is called Cotton to the Core. It's from KnitPal and it is available on Amazon. I'm not affiliated with the retailer, although she um, sent me a bag of this yarn for review purposes. I left a review there. Um, it's a really nice uh, DK weight cotton acrylic blend and I believe it is... Um, it is 78% cotton and 22% acrylic. I think I've been saying 80-20, so I've been lying just a smidge. But like I said, 78% cotton, 22% acrylic. It is a machine washable. The label says do not dry it in the dryer. I was a little bit afraid that it might shrink up, and I do think it shrunk just a little bit, but I knit the top fairly oversized, so I am still super, super pleased with the fit. And what I was looking for was a nice comfy tank um, to wear over the summer that would be nice and cool. 
Um, so when I got the yarn and swatched with it, I felt like it had a really nice hand. It comes in a variety of colorways and they're sort of a little bit heathered. Like this one is called denim and it kind of perfectly describes what I think of as the um, visual texture of the yarn as well as the colorway. As you can see, it looks almost like a pair of jeans, like a little bit faded and a little bit um, modeled in color. Um, and it is absolutely lovely. It's a little bit paler blue, um, but that's okay. And it comes in I think half a dozen dozen or closer to a dozen colors and the bags are six skeins a piece so that's about 850 yards and as you can see I had maybe 50 yards left over I did not even have a full ball I broke into both of these um, I did end up alternating skeins because after I uh, knit my first skein it looked like there was a subtle line actually I didn't go back and look um, I'm not sure I'm seeing that now. It might be fine once it was washed. Um, but uh, so so I did alternate skeins, which is how I ended up with little bits and pieces left over. Um, the pattern that I started with was Vincus from Barocco, and that is linked in this episode's show notes on my blog, The Corner of Knit and Tea. Um, and the pattern itself was absolutely lovely, and I decided to make one too many changes and threw myself off. Uh, the pattern was designed to be knit basically as two rectangles, and those rectangles, you know, basically a front and a back with very little shaping. There's a little bit of neck shaping, but otherwise it's literally just two rectangles, um, and then you seam them up the sides, seam at the shoulders, and add a little bit of um, extra ribbing for the armholes. Um, since there is no shaping, you kind of get the drop shoulder, which means it's not like a tank top but it also doesn't have any sleeves like literally you pick up and do I did about seven or eight rows for the um for the ribbing at the arm edge and that was it so there was no extra work there um other than the edging so um that was the pattern that I was originally going to start with and I thought oh I can beat this I can knit it in the round up to the armpits and then just split and I made a bunch of mistakes, including when I cast on for it in the round, I forgot to remove the one stitch at each side of each panel that would go into seaming. Um, so I had a weird number of stitches, and so the pattern didn't repeat nicely around. Um, also, the patterns that they suggested that you use, um, the pattern, the pullover is kind of a um, sampler. It's got a bunch of different stitches. And the patterns, um, they wrote them to be knit back and forth. There are no charts. They're all written. And it's just some simple stitch patterns, but they were written to be knit back and forth. So I was trying to, in my head, rewrite them to be written for in the round and do things correctly. And of course, if it says like knit three, purl two, you got a purl three knit uh, two. It's right. You just got to reverse things. And um, I started out on a needle size bigger than I ended up on. And I was afraid it was just going to be absolutely enormous. So I ripped that out. And on the second try, I was like, you know what? I don't want to do all of these different patterns. So I just made up my own pattern, which as you can see is a purl bump, just a bit of a seed dot stitch or seed stitch. Um, it's not really seed stitch because it's not changing but a bit of a dot stitch kind of on alternating diagonals. So basically what I did was I think I it, I did an eight row pattern and um, on the, you know, on the first row I knit five purled one and then um, later on I knit two purled one and then just staggered them. So um, that was that was how I chose to do this. I did the front and the back. I followed um, the I followed the Vincus top for the cast on number, and I followed it for um, kind of the neck instructions. I altered the length a little bit too, which I'll discuss in a minute. Um, but I followed it for the neck instructions and then um, kind of the pickup numbers around the arms and such. So. Um, I was concerned about running out of yarn, as it turns out I did not have to be. I probably could have gotten a little bit longer and used up more of the yarn. Um, I think because it's a cotton acrylic blend, I'm just going to turn the rest of this into a washcloth, which will be fine. Um, but so I, um, I abbreviated the ribbing at the bottom. It called for three inches of ribbing and I knit about an inch and a half. And I probably could have knit the full three inches, but then I would have squeaked this out. And so I wanted to be sure of what I was doing. And then I just knit the pattern and on the back, you basically knit for X inches. And I subtracted about an inch or an inch and a half from um, the total length, just so that I would be sure that I, and basically, like I said, I took it out of the ribbing, but I subtracted it from the total length. And then um, on the front, that just meant that I had to drop the neck um, an inch or an inch and a half below where it said I should because I wanted to compensate for the um, whole length. So for instance, my size was supposed to be 22 inches. I only went to 21 inches. So um, when it said start the neck at 19, I started the neck at 18. 
So that's a really, really simple math. Um, and otherwise I followed the pattern exactly. And like I said, it came out perfectly. It's nicely fitted over my shoulders so it doesn't look enormous, but then I also have some extra um, ease in uh, the bottom. So, and it's um, ever so slightly cropped. Um, it's, I, I want to say it's between the top of my jeans and, um, like right around the top of my jeans. So, um, it's not like super cropped by any means, but it's also not like hip length, which is where I put a lot of my sweaters. Um, so it definitely is a little bit shorter. So I wouldn't say cropped, um, but, but not, not super long. Anyway, it was a really satisfying project. Um, all told, I got it done in about three weeks, and that includes the first week of experimenting and ripping, and then about two weeks of knitting. Um, and so, like I said, I finished it actually on Thursday, I think, and so I washed it over the weekend. And, um, you know, your mileage may vary depending on what yarn you use, but I shoved mine in the washer and the dryer, and it came out lovely, and it's perfect. Um, and the only thing I'm going to do this afternoon is take it off and put it on my, um, well, either I'll have my husband take a picture of me in it, or I will take it off and put it on my um, butt so that I my um it's not really a dressmaker's form because it's really just a mannequin I will put it on the mannequin so I can take some photos and that will be the cover image for this episode so that is um, a project for me done and dusted it means it is time for me to turn my attention back to um, other projects uh, I am working on a sweater for my niece and I have not touched it since last week. I spent primarily this week working on this one and then working on a new one. And then I have a few other things I have going on. So I'm going to show you the new one and then I'll tell you a little bit about the couple other things I'm working on. Um, and then I don't have a lot to show you for spinning because I'm kind of stuck. Um, I'll tell you. It's, it's my usual. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to talk to you about is a pattern that I am knitting for... Um, Zen Yarn Garden. As you know, I do a lot of sample knits for them, and it was time to cast on another. This time we are doing a shawl, and it is um, a really interesting and beautifully worked shawl. Uh, the designer is Linnea Ormstein, and she has a variety of patterns that are primarily white on the background and make use of leaf varying kinds of leaf motifs and gradient colors. So I am doing the same, except I'm doing it with Zen Yarn Garden yarns. And um, the one I am knitting right now is called Litsia. I, I don't know precisely how you pronounce it. It's L-I-T-S-E-A. And um, Litsia is the, and now I can't remember whether she's Swiss. She might be Swiss. I'm a bad podcaster. I didn't, I, I didn't read up. Um, I, Litsia is um, a word for laurel. Um, and so the pattern is actually full of laurel leaves. And the interesting thing about the pattern that I'm knitting is that it starts um, with kind of a center medallion. So it starts in a circle and you're knitting in a circle and you are adding short rows and leaves and all kinds of things. And then you get to a certain point and you bind off certain sections and then it's got some wings that come out from either side. Um, when I showed it to a friend of mine, she said it's a little bit like West Knit's eyeball shawl. Um, a little. Um, I haven't knit that so I can't tell you and, and the pattern is um, a little bit different. The, um, the shawl is a little bit more, well I won't say boomerang in terms of um, the sides are uneven because the sides actually are even, but it's almost a triangle the way it comes up. It's hard to show. Um, and of course what I have today won't show you enough, but um, I did get started on the beginnings of it and this is the beginnings. So as I said, and I will tighten that that, that um, center cast on at the or the hole at the center of the cast on. I will tighten that up as I um, weave in my ends. So you start out moving in a circular pattern um, in your knitting, and then um, through short rows you build up some of the sections so it almost looked like a star for a little bit. And then I have put in my first leaves, and then I have put in my stem here, and then I'll put in a little bit more short rowing in the white, and then we'll have more leaves. So um, the yarns that I am using are Zen Yarn Garden Super Fine Fingering in their natural base. And that looks like this. It's a pretty plain yarn. Um, and that will be kind of the body of the shawl. And I have three skeins of that, which is what the pattern calls for. I should say the pattern was designed in sport weight and I'm knitting it in fingering weight. So I expect there to be some uh, some size difference. Um, I do think my shawl will be a little bit smaller, um, but I am knitting it on, well, 
I'm knitting it on a needle size one smaller because again my gauge tends to not be quite right and um, I probably should have just gone ahead and knitted it on the size it called for which was a six um, but I went ahead and knitted it on a US 5 so that's what I'm working with I'm hoping it won't be too small um, we do have a couple rounds of leaves so I think it will be enough to make it a decent size shawl and I also think because it's garter stitch it will block out um, so then I am using the um, woodland gradient and this is the sock gradient um which is a little bit different from zen yarn gardens um lux cakes which i have worked with before those are the gradients in the in the huge cakes these are those are the oversized cakes they're 150 grams this is 100 grams and right around 400 yards and <clears throat> excuse me the one problem that i do know i will run into since i'm working with a gradient that does not repeat um, is that I will have to make a choice at some point because the two wings, I can't do them the same because I've only got one ball of gradient yarn. So my guess is I will um, get somewhat through the um, green and maybe a little bit of the brown on the center motif and then I'll do brown and yellow on one side and yellow and black on another side. So um, I think it will still be pretty. I think it will still go together, um, but the gradient won't be strictly in the gradient format. So um, we'll have to see how that looks. I, I think given that there's enough white between them, it will not be a problem. But so that's what I have so far. And I'm hoping maybe by next week I will have the, um, like I said, each each um, sort of crown or each section of laurel leaves has two leaves. So I have more lee I have more um, short rows and then I have more leaves and then I have a section of another chunk section of white like the center here and then another um, wreath of leaves and then I think more white so I'm hoping maybe I will finish the center circle this week if I if I really put my nose to the grindstone and get it done um, and I would love to have this done by early June so I can send it off for photos um, and it can be available um, later in the summer as a kit um, so again this is a uh, lint C or lint say I don't know how to pronounce it l-i-n-t-s-e-a by lint Nao Orenstein and there will be um if there is a link off of Ravelry I will provide a link in the show notes if not I will just put the pattern name and designer and um for those of you who can use Ravelry you can um look it up there um I'm hoping maybe it will be on Lovecrafts or somewhere else so I can link it there and it might be because I might have linked it last week I can't remember I will double check but that is what I've got going so far. And it's not a ton, but it's enough to um, kind of give me a little bit of a look. Um, and I will say, um, so when I went to look at the pattern, uh, the leaf pattern does come charted, but it also comes written. And I looked at the charts and I looked at some of the written directions and I thought, oh, this is going to be complicated. I don't know that I want to do this. And um, it actually was not complicated at all. I needed to follow the pattern, um, but but these these leaves are just created by short rowing back and forth. It's very intuitive um, and uh, her instructions are well written. I have not had any trouble. It was just sort of the, as I sat down and tried to read the instructions, it was just too much to look at without actually having knitting in front of me and doing it as soon as I just kind of put my head down and did it it all made sense um so I I really I am enjoying this and it is it's it's a little different and I always like to knit something that's slightly different in technique so um so it gives me a little something new so I'm excited about this and I will show you more next week so that's kind of mostly what I've got on my needles right now. Um, I am going to try and get back to um, my sister, my niece's sweater this week. So the two big projects will be the Zen Yarn Garden Shawl and um, my niece's sweater. Um, I also have a new chicken and this time we are doing bright crazy colors. Tonight's skein is pink and purple. Last night's skein was kind of a reddish orange and yellow. Um, I also did one that was hot pink and pastel pink. Um, so we're doing a lot of um, flower colors because I think this theme is going to be kind of floral and garden. So we have lots and lots of fun and if it's blowing out the monitor it really is that bright. It's crazy bright. Um, and so this has been fun. I took a little bit of a break on the um, black and white feathers I was working on last week. So that's kind of my third project for the week. Um, and then my hope is, um, so remember how I mentioned that my husband is, um, is, is an enthusiast and, um, oh, I 
found my label, is an enthusiast of exercising. Well, on Saturday, he is setting out to do a 200 mile bike ride, which is, um, he uh, fairly routinely rides 100 miles on the bike um, on his bicycle. And it takes him about five or six hours. And um, he would like to do a 200 mile ride, but um, there are no 200 mile supported rides in the sense that there are no um, official uh, uh, official races or anything to do that distance. So um, what we're doing is he's going to ride that and I am going to stop every 30 to 50 miles to meet up with him to refresh his water bottles, make sure he has enough nutrition, um, make sure that if he has any uh, technical issues with the bike, I have tools for him, etc. So for me, that is going to be a lot of drive to our meeting spot, sit and wait for him for a few hours, drive to another meeting spot, sit and wait for him for a few hours. Um, and for me, that means tons of knitting time. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm planning to take Roxy's sweater and then I think I'm also going to take those skeins of yarn that I showed you that I want to turn into hats for Knit the Rainbow. Um, honestly, the Zen Yarn Garden pattern is a lot of short rows and I have to pay attention to the pattern. Um, and so I'm not sure that's going to be the best project for picking up and putting down throughout the day. Um, but a sweater where I am just working on the body, a straight body with no shaping and or some hat projects, I think those will be great. So um, that is my plan for this weekend. So hopefully I will come back to you with lots of new things next week and lots of progress on Roxy's sweater, because again, I would love to get that one done soon, um, because I still have her brother's sweater to do. So let me take a quick sip of tea, um, and that kind of gets the knitting content done and a little preview of the fact that I'll have more to show you next week. So let's talk spinning. Unfortunately, I don't have a spin to show you. I am this close to finishing. I have maybe a half ounce left on the bobbins that I am plying. I plied all night last night at midnight, and I'm almost done with the skein of the very Easter eggy kind of bright yarn that I had showed you. It was teal and aqua and yellow, and then it also had some pinks in it, and it came out gorgeously. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with it, but I couldn't pull the finished bobbin off the spinning wheel because, as I said, it's still connected to the last little bit that's left on the bobbins. <laughs> And I meant to ply that up today and then the day just got away from me and so I could not finish it before I came to podcast because we're almost at five o'clock and that's time for exercise and dinner and all the other things. So um, that will, I will be probably finishing that tomorrow, I hope, and then soaking it and letting it dry and measuring it. Um, and that will hopefully be up on um, my Instagram and in my Etsy shop later this week. Um, and if it doesn't sell, then I will bring it to show you next week. So let's talk about what I'm going to spin this week. Um, one of my favorite, I don't want to say new dyers because honestly, I don't know how long she has been dying. She has been on Etsy for a while, but a dyer that came to my attention last year was Kumasi, who is, um, I believe, a queer fiber artist living in the San Francisco Bay Area or um, Berkeley area. I can't remember precisely where her packages come from, but the West Coast, the Bay Area, um, and she does really, really beautiful um fiber and dyes it in all kinds of really interesting colorways. And I have spun a number of her braids in this um, last year, year and a half. I've probably bought half a dozen of them. And um, I bought this one maybe a couple months ago because honestly, to me, it looked like autumn. It looks like, um, you know, Indian corn or harvest or pumpkins and all the things that fall brings. And I know that we are definitely going into summer, not fall, um, but it is just a lovely blend. I do not remember what the fiber is. I will have to go check my um, records, um, but it is fairly soft. So I'm thinking it's either BFL or Falkland. Um, it's probably Falkland, but it might be Merino. I can't remember. I will double check um, and I will have the information for you when I finish with this one. But this is what I'm going to work on this week. And I'm just really, really excited for this one. It's got some really nice colors. And it's interesting because it's not my usual color palette. Usually I don't end up in the oranges and browns and yellows. Um, but I just I love this one. And um, like I said, it makes me think of fall and um, all the glorious kind of pumpkin and Halloween and um, lovely colorways. And I just think it's going to be a gorgeous braid all spun up. So um, I'm going to be working on that one this week, and that will also be destined for the shop. Um, so uh, if you are interested in it, it will be up for claiming. 
So I hope that you have had um, a lovely week. I know things are hard out there, a little bit of everywhere. Um, and I am not putting my head down and just crafting. Um, I am definitely consuming the news around me and doing what I can to make things better. Um, but there is a part of me that at some point in the day has to say, okay, that's enough for today. It's time to relax and craft. Um, and I will say that I am finding refuge in my crafting. Um, so I hope that you are doing well. I hope you're staying healthy. I know um, COVID is continuing on and new waves are striking. Um, please, please be safe and take care of yourself. And um, until I see you next time, I will say happy spinning, happy knitting, happy sipping, and I'll see you next week. Bye.